Welcome CSC 230 W1 to EX18. This is going to be our final project. And I initially was just going to have you look at it and figure it out and just create it. But I'm going to guide you through a little bit and I will make some videos for you to follow if there are some parts that you need help with. But otherwise you could jump in yourself and you could use some W3 Schools resources to help you with it and I'll kind of guide you to where they are so that you don't have to follow everything I do. You can kind of work on it yourself a little bit. So, so what I have here is basically a hero image and a hero image is kind of a, a large image that takes up almost the whole page and we have some text here a headline a paragraph and a button that's kind of centered in this area and there's basically two divs there's the hero image div and then there's the hero text div so the headline this paragraph and the button is part of the hero text div and it's centered up and down and right and left and there's a little trick to that which i'll show you and you'll also see in w3 schools but it's meant to be responsive so that if you change the width of this the text will move, the image will not get resized, and eventually what we're gonna do is have it jump to a mobile layout so that it's basically one column. Now, I didn't even show you the three columns yet. I only showed you the hero image. So hero image, we basically have a large headline using Arial Black, I'm not using any Google fonts right here, and there is a drop shadow on here, and this is called a text shadow property. And if you look at W3 Schools, look for the text shadow property that's put on there. And you can even adjust opacity as well, I'll show you that. And that's the only thing that's really special on here. I think I lessened the line height a little bit so it's a little tighter. And there's a button on here, there's a hover state. So it doesn't do anything yet in the next level of this class. In 235 we'll work on forms and building forms and going through form data, but for now We'll just kind of have a hover state on this button. Now, if you scroll down, there's three columns here, and this is set up with flex. So that's pretty easy to do flex with three columns. And you just need a container set to flex, and, then, and the elements inside it are basically broken up into three. Now, there's icons in here. These are SVG images, and you can resize them with CSS. And I just resize them with width and pixels, because if you use percent, they're different sizes. So in, in width and pixels, they kind of work out okay and we have h2s here we have paragraphs and then there's a navigation bar on the bottom now this could have been up here it could have been along the top but i just put it along the bottom for now and it just has some hover states on these that get dark green and basically there's a there's a whole nav bar that's kind of green because the, i i didn't line them up evenly I, basically there's five buttons so i tried to do them at like 20 percent each but they go over a little bit, so it's like 19.5% each button. So there's a little bit extra space in here, and they will get smaller because of that percent. So as you go down, it will be somewhat responsive, but eventually it's gonna go down with our query. And I just wanna show you what's gonna happen with the query then too, is this is gonna go from being 600 to like 400, and then also this H1 is gonna change too and become smaller. So. I'll show you that and the button stays the same the paragraph stays the same I think these things get a little smaller too those headlines it's hard to see them here because they're covered up and you can see they start to break up on lines I tried to put them together so they didn't break up but then they made it too big so that you were able to scroll across and I didn't want to do that so uh, I didn't put any breakpoints in between you could put a breakpoint in between but right now I just put one breakpoint at like 580 and then it becomes one column instead of three columns and then these buttons actually become a one column button so they become a block instead of inline block so they're just centered in the middle and their rollover just goes across the page so that's all we're really doing here it doesn't seem like a lot but it, it's a little bit of work here and you know it doing it yourself is a little more challenging and we haven't worked with a hero image and let me just point out where some of this stuff is if you go to w3 schools they have a how-to section which is really cool they have a lot of cool things in here and if you go down to i think images they have hero image so they have an area of how to do a hero image on here and that's where i kind of got some of the code from so i used some of the code and edited it a little bit uh, also another place where they have hero image if you go to css and you go down to backgrounds and i think that's under advanced they have css backgrounds CSS backgrounds and if you go all the way down they have I think a hero image in here too and a sample to kind of look at of a hero image I think is this a hero image 
no, here's the hero image. But they have something here that's kind of doing that. So that's where that came from. So this code, the hero image class and the hero text class is right from here. I took it right from the W3 schools, modified it a little bit. And in my code, that's right here. Here's my CSS, here's the hero image. Now I adjusted it a little bit, but there's even, but that's all you really have to do. Now make sure that it uses your image. Now I'm gonna give you uh, a repel that you can fork with all the HTML done. And with these things kind of set up, so you just have to fill them in. Now you could look at this and see what I did here, but I want you to kind of go through it and copy the code from W3Schools and kind of work with that a little bit. So there's the hero image and the hero text. Those are the two things that are on here. This is the hero image is the background image. And it also has a green color in case the image doesn't load, but then this is the hero text that's in here. So that's what's being done in here, the hero text. And this thing with the top 50%, left 50%, and transform translate, this is like a little hack to get it to center up and down and right and left. I tried different ways to do that, but this is actually the most recommended way that I saw. So I left it like this and it seems to work okay, although it doesn't let it be as wide as I'd like to, but that works okay. And then I have it broken down into hero text H1, that's the headline, hero text P, that's the one paragraph, and then hero text button. That's all the information about that button that's basically this thing. So a lot of code just for one button that's here. Uh, even a border radius, which makes it a round corner button down here. So I made it look a little bit nicer than their sample. And as you go down, there's a hero text button hover, which changes color. That's the thing that changes color. It turns white. You could make it anything you want. Uh, and then there's flex container. That's basically the container that contains the three columns. So it just has a background color, it has padding, and it has display flex so that it makes it three columns. And then there's flex container H2. There's columns in there, there's columns P. Columns is the general columns uh, and the paragraphs that are in there. And then there's specific ones. And here's the icons, there's class names for the icons. Then there's nav and then there's buttons at the end those are the buttons that are these are the buttons in the nav bar at the bottom so you see some of this here and then there's the media queries and there's only one media query and it's just changing the hero text the flex container uh, so that it's a little bit smaller uh, flex direction is going to change the column so it's one column uh, hero image is going to get a little smaller. The buttons are going to change the block instead of inline blocks, so they're not going across, they're going down. And then some of the padding is removed a little bit. So not a whole lot going on with the media query. So that's what you're going to be building on. So I'm going to give you something that you could basically link to and work on it from there. And then we could put it into your repel if you want to. I don't think I can drag it into your repel. I used to be able to do that. But I'm going to give you that so that you can have an index to start with. Your index will look like this somewhat to start. And then you'll be doing primarily the CSS. So you won't have to do a whole lot with the index initially. I'm not going to have you do that from scratch from the beginning. I'll try to give you some structure to kind of work with a little bit. So that's what you're going to be doing here. Uh, other things just to note, like I said, text shadow. Look for text shadow. That's under CSS. If you look for CSS advanced, I think they might have like shadows down there. CSS shadows, there it is. So that shows you how to do the text shadows. And then you could even do RGBA if you need to turn down the opacity. The shadow does kind of an X and a Y and then the blur amount and then the color. And then you could even do RGBA, which does alpha, which you could even turn it down if you want. But uh, let me see, anything else here that I need to look at? Background color, this is the, the container. And I just used a regular green color. I didn't mix up anything really specific with it. So I'll give you images. You'll have all this stuff all ready to work with. So that's what you're going to be doing next. And I'll kind of help you as you go through that a little bit. So if you need more help from videos, you can do that. If you want to keep working on your own, that's fine too to just kind of work through it. So that's what we'll be doing for EX18. And again, anything else, multiple pages and doing forms and things like that, we'll be doing that next semester. We'll, we'll be doing a lot of form validation with JavaScript and things like that in the 235 course. But for now, we're going to do this to kind of finish up this semester. If we add another page to it, if we have time to do that, we can set up another page so that we can link and have another page in our site. But for now, we'll kind of work on this since we're winding down the semester. So uh, I'll have some more videos coming, but in the meantime, I'm going to give you a link that you can forward 
fork and start working on this.